Hey there, Bear Club! At the Mama Bear Initiative, we explore how to protect ourselves so we can protect our cubs, the people who depend on us. Join us and get the confidence you need to stay safe, make good choices, and protect yourself and those you care about. Let's go! Hello and welcome back to the Mama Bear Initiative podcast. I'm Stephanie Dunham. I'm Evelyn Mason. I'm Rochelle Knapp. I'd like to thank you for joining us today on this podcast episode, and we hope that you learn something today. We have yeah. a fairly important topic to yes. yeah, discuss. Very important. <laughs> that, Definitely. You know, it surprises me how little known this is. Yes. As a fact of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I keep encountering people who are a bit surprised by the idea that they have the right to say no if somebody's touching them and they don't want it. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me either. I mean, I remember <clears throat> fe- not realizing that myself. Right. I guess I've passed over into this other existence now where it's like, yeah, duh. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's one of those things that once you know, you know, and you don't go back. But until then, you just kind of keep going without even realizing. Right. Well, as you know, with a lot of things that we need to learn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that I've fully transitioned to realizing that this is the case because it feels like what I'm doing now is turning around to other people and saying, yeah, you have a right to say no. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. And so, if, yeah, go ahead, Michelle. If you come from trauma and you tend to not understand boundaries, it makes sense that you would not respond in the correct way or not protect yourself in that way. But we do in fact have a right to say no to unwanted advances or touching or whatever it might be. Yeah. And it's hard for people to understand that concept because we all want to be quote unquote nice, but being nice isn't going to protect you. It's going to get people doing things to you. You don't want them to do. Right. So what we're talking about is today is this idea that um, we can decide who touches us. Right. Mm -hmm. And when. Yep. And how. And how. And where. Exactly. (laughs) That's all important. I don't want to get too deep into the where, but, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Maybe type of touching is a better way of putting it. Well, you know. I mean, yeah, there's different kinds of touching. Um, the most common thing people do is shake hands. Right. right? Yep. Or hug. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, for the most part, depending on your comfort level with the other person, either one of those things is generally okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, although I've seen, like, movies or TV shows where character from a society that shakes hands holds his hand out to another character whose society does not shake hands right and the other creatures or person it could be creatures (laughs) could be an alien i mean i watch sci-fi so whatever um (laughs) staying there looking at the hand like what what What, are you doing what do i do with this (laughs) yeah where do i go with this (laughs) we want to talk about three different things we want to talk about what unwanted touches right? right we want to talk about what wanted or acceptable touches Mm -hmm. and then we want to talk about how do you keep people from touching you because we are a self-defense oriented podcast yes Yes. right so let's start with what is unwanted touch i mean i feel like when i was reading our our list of things we wanted to talk about i felt like it's in the name yeah (laughs) don't touch (laughs) me right right should be obvious (laughs) Touch well, I mean, unwanted. unwanted. Touch. What is yeah. unwanted touch? Circular definition. It's right. touch that's <laughs> not wanted. Right. <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah. that's true. But let's go a little deeper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we do have to kind of parse out a little bit more, I think, what, what what's, un, what's unacceptable touch. What's unwanted touch. Right. There's a lot of things that go into that idea. And I, the first one that comes to mind is your comfort level. How comfortable are you with this particular person? First of all, being close to you and not to touch you. Right. And then secondly, deciding how comfortable you are with them, even touching you in a friendly way or an innocent way. And then if you can determine their motivation for touching you, 
that's, you know, may or may not be possible, but, Mm -hmm. um, well, you're, you're touching on a couple of points later on, but it sounds like what you're talking about is, or what would be an unwanted touch is something that invades your comfort zone. Right. Yeah. Right. Like there's so many forms of touching, like there's hands touching other people. There's bodies close together. True. Mm-hmm. Kissing is a form of touching. Right. Um, they're standing too close to the point where you're like making physical contact. Right. Right. Um, or close to making, I mean, I can get pretty uncomfortable being super close, even if I'm not touching someone. True. Someone being super close to me. It almost feels like touching. Right. And uh, I think a lot of it depends on the context. So um, one thing, Rochelle and I were talking earlier about this. I mean, if you're in a situation where you're, say, in a subway, and everyone is sort of smushed together, right? that's one thing. But if you don't have that situation, but somebody comes right up close to you and they're a stranger, and it's like, whoa, 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 back up. <laughs> yeah, and like if you see videos of people on New York subways, people don't sit that close to each other. Right. It's usually not that crowded. Um, so if you're just sitting in your seat and somebody comes and sits practically in your lap and like is like <laughs> touching you, right? Mm-hmm. That's, and it's not a crowded train, that is something that would I would consider unacceptable. Yeah. Right. Total stranger just like physically contacting you just feels wrong. Yeah, because yeah, there's no reason for it. There's Especially no, if there's empty yeah. seats available, there's no reason for them to be that close to you. Right. It, it's immediately creepy. Like, what is your motivation? What are you doing? Right. <laughs> and, and, and you know, here in America, personal space is valued at yeah. least three feet. Right. I mean, I've been in situations, waiting rooms and other areas where if you walk into it, and let's say it's fairly crowded, mm-hmm. there'll be people sitting if they're together sitting together and they'll be like two to three seats between them and the next person yeah. right rarely yeah. does anybody purposefully sit that close <laughs> yes. to somebody else if there's space to sit I'll away swear. yeah right so which makes you immediately feel suspicious like this this doesn't feel right right and i think that yeah. that would go into the inappropriate because you're feeling like uh, this something's wrong here you're feeling the red flags I do have a funny story about uncomfortable situation, but turned into a, a fairly okay situation. I was on a bus for a long trip and the guy next to me was overweight. I'm overweight. And we were just so close to each other. We were, you know, there was inevitable. We were going to bump into each other and it was super <laughs> awkward for like the first 15 minutes of the, of the bus ride. So he finally looks at me and I look at him and he goes, well, I guess we should be friends while we're on this leg of the trip. <laughs> and so he said to me, because we just could not get comfortable and get far enough away from each other. We weren't bumping yeah. each other or touching in some way. And it made it a potentially awkward, uncomfortable situation less so. So in that case, it was unwanted, but it was okay because we had to deal with it for however long he was sitting next to me or vice versa. So I was thankful that he was able to make me feel a little more comfortable about the situation. And we just had a nice conversation. Yeah. kind of laughed at the fact that we kept bumping into each other all the time. You didn't get a creepy vibe or anything. It was more like just two strangers who were trying to maintain distance. But couldn't. But couldn't. <laughs> and finally <laughs> just came to terms with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well even in friendship, I mean, it, it really depends on the friendship. There has to be some sort of known boundary physically between you and the other person. Right. right. That's true. And, you know, if there isn't one and you're physically close as well as emotionally close... Um, you know, it really depends on who the person is, how comfortable you, you both are with that idea, you know, just, yeah. Um, but if there's any doubt about mm-hmm. the closeness of the other person, regardless of the society, mm-hmm. you probably shouldn't let it go on. Yeah. 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 I think just erring on the side of keeping a, a certain amount of distance is just wisdom, yes. you know, cause you can't. Yeah, it's like um, Steph often will say, it's better to be wrong and, and safe and safe, safe than, than right, right and, and hurt or dead. Right. So erring on the side of let me just, you know, put some space between me and that person mm-hmm. until you know better, until something may change. You might want to increase the space <laughs> or you might find that you can get closer. But yeah, when in doubt, just... You know, sometimes, like, in the situation you described, Rochelle, a way to, like, if you can't get physically away from someone, you can kind of get mentally away. Right. Mm -hmm. You can, like, 
comport yourself in a way that indicates these are my boundaries. Right. I mean, even if it's only yeah. three inches from my body and you don't want anybody in that zone. Right. You can you can send off those vibes just by how you're sitting, not looking at anyone, not talking right. to anyone. Yes. Maybe even the expression on your face or whatever. <laughs> yeah, even you know, even if you can't put much space in, you can angle your body so you're turned away from that person. Yes. I've done that. So there's a less like the side of your body, like if you have, you know, if you're a woman, obviously there's the, what's touching it matters too. So if you're turned <laughs> right. away or you're turned in such a way that you're in more control. Right. Where if you're forced to be close together, I think that helps too. At least it helps me. I'm not just subjected to whatever's happening. I can actually angle my body. So I'm, if I have to be touching them, at least it's just my arm or yeah, instead of the side of my part of the back or yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't have to be any specific kind of touch. It could be any physical contact at all. Right. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, like you're talking about if someone's arm is leaning on your arm, and there's no reason for that to be happening. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even if it's like they just sat down, it doesn't mean you have to take it. Right. Yeah. If you don't want it, you don't want it. Yeah. And I, I think another important unwanted touch is when someone is trying to control you or trying to mm -hmm. dominate in some way. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, even if it, it even, even if it might seem harmless enough, like, oh, you just put his hand on my shoulder. But you get this sort of, he's sort of pushing down, he was leaning over, like there's, you know, you start to feel it in your gut that something's wrong here. I don't know this person well enough for him to be doing this, or even if I do. Or she. Or she. Um, that there, there's something that I feel like I'm being subjugated, you know, then, uh, okay, back off. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think it matters if they're pushing on you. I if they are in some position of authority over you or they have some sort of power, it does not matter what kind of touch they're doing to you mm -hmm. because they don't have a right to invade you like that. Right. Right. And that's period. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's going back to that. You know, it doesn't really matter what kind of touch if you're uncomfortable with it, whatever the reason, but that is a way that sometimes people will dominate over somebody else's right. to touch them in a certain way. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And and just basically crossing a boundary. Um even if you haven't specifically established one, I think it's more understood, especially in a professional environment mm -hmm. or with people who are basically strangers. You don't just touch people. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Especially in America, you know, we Yeah, I wanted uh, to I was thinking about this and I wanted to kind of add like I'm a I'm a martial arts instructor. Mm -hmm. Touching people comes with the job. That's right. right. That's true. And mm -hmm. But still, I will say, is it all right if I touch you? Right. You know, I want to get their permission first, even though it's implied that at some point I'm going to be touching their hands or their shoulders or whatever. Yeah. You know, or if I'm doing a technique with somebody, my hands will be wherever they are. Right. right. And my legs will be wherever they are. <laughs> right. That's right. Um, I've been in some fairly uncomfortable positions doing martial art techniques with people with guys yes mm -hmm. i've been in some pretty uncomfortable positions if i spend too much time thinking about it if i if i try to make it sexual for example oh <laughs> yeah like thinking about what body parts next to what body part it's just kind of like a, a way to like eliminate that yes is like, just to be professional yeah, and there's a whole, like, entry into that, like you were saying, like asking permission. Mm -hmm. In the martial arts, we have this, if you're going to be working with somebody, you bow to them. It's mutual submission to working on a technique together. You're giving that permission. Right. And even, like, uh, for example, I've worked with um, people who are higher rank and, you know, as they're okay, and they'll explain the technique to me. At any point, if I feel uncomfortable... I can always speak up. So there is still right. that, even though, you know, you might end up grappling on the floor, mm -hmm. you have chosen that and it's understood that you're going to do it in a way that honors the other person that isn't weird or sexual or inappropriate. And I'd say 99% of martial artists understand that it's going to be uncomfortable at times. And I think the professionalism, I know for me personally, it helps because that was a big struggle I had in the very beginning, just coming from the past I came from. But I understood, thankfully, fairly quickly, this is like going to the doctor. It's necessary. 
to mm. learn the technique well. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, but this is what we do. And no one's any different than anybody else in that way. We're all in the same boat. We're doing the same thing. And yeah. it's, even if it's somebody I've never met before and I have to do this technique with them, there might be some awkwardness, but it's okay because we're all doing it together. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've tagged groins with my toes doing mm -hmm. kicks to the groin <laughs> yeah accidentally <laughs> wasn't intentional i came close I, I tried to come close but not actually hit that area right. if i can help it but there's been a couple of times where i kind of got <laughs> a little too close <laughs> yeah but we just kind of laughed it off because we understood that you know i was doing something specific to that area and to train well i need to be close but my job is to not actually hit that area if I can right. help it. Right. And, um, you know, I've had to, in a situation where the, the person has accidentally touched me, mm -hmm. um, I've kind of moved their hand and we're like, you know, oh, oh yeah, 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 I'll say, you know, and it's understood because they're, they're not trying to inappropriately touch. Right. They're just, you know, that's where their hand landed or whatever. So Right. It's in a specific context. So like Rochelle was saying, it's understood. Yeah. So let's move to what um, is wanted or acceptable touch. Because obviously that's important. Yes. Yeah. We're not, we're not advocating for no one touch anyone else. I mean, right. we're humans. <laughs> yeah. We need that. So I, I think a good place to start is that it's mutual. That mm -hmm. both people want that. Um, for whatever reason, I immediately thought of my mom and I have this thing where we hug each other in the morning before, like before I go to work or before she goes somewhere, like whoever leaves first, we always hug. Mm -hmm. And it's something we both look forward to. It's mutual. And it's a nice, close, good, squeezing hug. Yeah, your mom yeah. gives great hugs. <laughs> oh, she does. <laughs> and she's short and Y'all, if you ever meet my mom. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to say... I'm not a person who likes being touched. Yeah. Even by people who are close to me. Right. Yes, it's true. It's a physical problem as much as it is a mental problem. Mm -hmm. However, even though I don't like it, I will let people touch me. But I've had conversations with, with Evelyn and yep. my husband <laughs> about where to touch me. Because anything above my shoulders is extremely sensitive and yes. like... Touching it makes me cringe, like I'm being tickled yeah. rapidly by a hundred fingers. Mm -hmm. um, Which no one would want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Seriously. My feet are off limits. My knees are off limits because those sens those areas are just extremely sensitive and I just don't want to be touched there. So, you know, I can stand a certain amount of it. And I think the conversation to make it mutual is needs to be had if you have issues Absolutely. like me. If you have sensitivities, whether they're mental, physical, emotional, yeah. whatever, it's okay for you to establish, you know, I can stand this kind of touch, but not that kind of touch. Right. Yeah. And I think it's so important, like you said, to have that conversation because, you know, being your best friend, I want to make sure that I'm treating you the way I should be treating you, you know, honoring your boundaries. But how do I know what they are until we talk about it? Because... You know, she was mentioning above the, you know, anything above the like neck, shoulders. So I like to play with, if I care about somebody, I like to play with their hair. I'm always playing with my son's hair. I play with my mom's hair. I start playing with Stephanie's hair and she's like, Ooh. <laughs> no, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, so I've had to think, don't touch her head because, you know, I don't want to put her through that. <laughs> and right. she's been very patient as I've, you know, oops. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I you tend know, to just that, cringe and move yeah, away. And I'd be like, oops, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, you know, it, it, it's so important to have that conversation because otherwise people might think about their own comfort level without knowing it, what yours is. Yeah. And there's other things that, you know, we can sit very close to one another. Yeah. Um, you know, we can like, we can act, I think we sit very close to one another. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> on do. On the couch when we're watching a movie or just talking or whatever. And that's like a real best friend kind of situation. Yeah. It's mutual. And I'm totally comfortable with that. Yeah. Right. I can, that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. She's not like sit over at the other side of the room. Although if that was really her comfort level, yeah. I would honor that because I want to make sure that we're, 
um, you know, equal and I'm not giving her something she doesn't want. Yeah. And, you know, like if you're married, there's a certain amount of touching that goes on that's between you and your spouse. Right. Yes. But even there, you can set boundaries. Right. On what your spouse is doing. And your spouse can set boundaries on what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, it's not, unless you mutually give each other a free for all, it's not necessarily <laughs> a free for all. Right. Right. And that's just, you know, basic decency, respect, you know, to be able to learn what the other person's boundaries are. And then, you know, what they're, in this case, you know, what they're comfortable with touch wise, and then really working to honor that. Right. And I think we kind of covered. Um, situational and socially acceptable yeah. forms of touching, yeah. like sitting close to a stranger on the bus, you can't help but bump elbows. Right. Yeah. What are you going to do right. about that? Are you going to get up like, you touch me? <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? That really wouldn't work. <laughs> that, that's just kind of like not going to be, you, sh you shouldn't be on the bus if you're going to react like that. Right. Yeah. If you're that sensitive, then yeah, you, you need to not be in a situation where you're going to be you know, in, inadvertently touched. Yeah. Cause Gosh at my, sakes. at my job, it's inevitable. We're going to bump. We do give out directions behind you coming around the side of you, but sometimes bumping into each other happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we all like in the dojo, we've all accepted. This is just what's going to happen. And one of my, my GM, she puts General her general manager. Yes. She, she puts her hand <laughs> on my shoulder, or my back when she's going by me. Cause she's not very verbal and that's fine because I understand why she's doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you know it's you know, her yeah and we yeah. just sort of touch each other affectionately because so, we're work buddies other people not my gm um but that's acceptable <laughs> level of touch <laughs> you, your gm's not your work buddy <laughs> <laughs> she's a very nice person but no, but no. she has somebody yeah. has to be in charge right that's, that's right true. somebody's She's... gotta corral you crazy because <laughs> we're all friends and we know each other at a certain comfort level yeah. so that sort of on your shoulder coming by is is okay and we yeah. haven't really talked about it. We just kind of know that. Yeah. And that's like, that's like a situational, socially right. acceptable. Yeah. yeah. And it's thing. understood. So yeah. this is how we treat each other. So if somebody were to do that, knowing that, you know, it's, you don't expect somebody, what, why did you touch me on the shoulder? You know, it's yeah, already, right. it's understood. And we don't yeah. do it to new people either because they won't get it. <laughs> yeah. They might be, they might be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Until exactly. they start to get understand the, the place and yeah. the people. Yeah. And, you know, I was just thinking like there's different societies, different cultures that have more or less touching going on. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like you're more likely to be greeted by people who are more comfortable with hugging and kissing. Right. As part of their culture with a hug and a kiss. Right. Yeah. And I, I've been greeted that way by people. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I know, especially if I didn't you're not see a, that coming. <laughs> you're not a touchy feely person to begin with. And this guy's coming in for a kiss on the cheek. You're like, Ooh. I'm not married to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> then he goes for the other cheek because, you know, he's That's from a, Italy or something. Yeah. 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 If it was somebody from that kind of a culture, I don't want to necessarily name the kinds of cultures I think do that. But, you know, if that, if I yeah. was in that culture, at that time, you know, at, at any time. And I understood that that's what was probably going to happen. I could prepare myself right. for yeah, dealing with true. it, you know, and just, it's just, it's just for a second, you know, yeah. what I don't want is to be in a culture or society where I don't have any choice at all ever. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're just like coming at me all the time and I can't ever say no. Right. If yeah. I'm just visiting somewhere, that's one thing. But if I'm living there, I probably would have to work harder to say, look, I get this is part of your culture, but I am personally not comfortable with this. Right. Yeah. And I really don't appreciate it when you do that to me. And I yeah. would like you to stop. Yeah. I would, ha I would have to establish that boundary because it, it would do things to me that I wouldn't want going on inside of myself. Like right. the anxiety triggering and all the stuff that I have to deal with on a regular basis anyway. Yeah. Right. And being able to tell someone like that, uh, you know, to be able to speak up, and I know we're going to get into that soon, but keeping in mind that it's okay if the person, if they're offended by that, then they're not a good person. Yes, you you want to keep your distance from them anyway. But if they're like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry, I'll try to remember that. And then you see them making an effort. 
Mm -hmm. Either way, it's worth speaking up. Yeah. So that brings us to the final point. How do you keep people from touching you? Well, let's see. We could avoid people altogether. Become a hermit. No? You could separate yourself from society and never have any more human contact ever. That sounds like something someone, I'm not going to say who, someone I know would say. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I mean, that would be a fail-safe way. However. True. We have to live as real people in the real world. And as we said before, we actually want a certain amount of touch. So. Yeah, yeah, I think um, there was some study done a long time ago about um, children in adopted homes or in adoption centers mm-hmm. who were not. This is kind of a horrific mm. like experiment or whatever oh. they did, but they did not touch a certain amount of babies for a certain amount of time. A lot of them died. How horrible. I know. It makes me want to run in there and no, I will but touch the-, the baby. Dang it. But the point is the the yeah this is, I don't remember when this happened it was like early psychology yeah when they did horrible things to people <laughs> mm. yeah. for the sake of science let's see what happens if yes oh, I, I have a psychology degree so I read about all of that yeah but, mm-hmm. and you and you kind of like kind of looking at reading this and you're like looking and squinting at it like what <laughs> what they is did happening what yeah like yeah. how could how could how that could have been allowed other people oh my gosh it's horrible. Anyway, um, so I think one of the things we have to start with is establishing something called bodily autonomy. What is Mm. bodily autonomy? This is my body. And it belongs to me. Yeah. (laughs) I am protecting what I have. Right. It's mine. This belongs to me. You were born in it. Mm -hmm. Right. The DNA was given to you by your parents. Yeah. So it belongs to you. Yep. And there's no one as close to you as your own body. You know, you are in charge of your body. Right. And, and when you're a child, before you become, you know, an adult, it's still your body. Right. Right. Your parents have to protect your body Mm -hmm. and you, I mean, by protecting your body, they're protecting you, but they have to protect it, but that doesn't mean they have a right to do with it, whatever they want. Right. Exactly. Right. You, they still have to respect the boundary of, you know, this is my child. Right. And not, you know, force things on the child that they don't want. And I know that there's like some movements out there where, like, I remember hearing about parents asking their babies permission to change their diapers. <laughs> what? <laughs> to establish bodily. I mean, that is the thing. I don't know if it's still happening as much as it did, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. But there was this thing, this movement happening where parents were literally asking their newborn infants. Now, (laughs) I guess at some point you should start doing that kind of thing. But newborn Mm -hmm. infants can't tell you yes or no. Right. Yeah. In fact, if they're crying because they're... They're already telling you. Pooping in their diaper. (laughs) Then you should probably just change it because right. they're yeah. telling you by their cry mm-hmm. right they're, they're that saying, they need yeah, you to take care of them i'm uncomfortable right. help me but as your child gets older it makes more sense to me when they can like cognitively understand mm-hmm. the difference between yes and no right that you yes. can start working on bodily autonomy with them yes. right what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and starting it early i think is so important because I don't know if it's a generational thing or what, but I was never taught that by my parents. And not that they were advocating for, you know, they they weren't going the other way and they weren't touching me inappropriately or anything, but we didn't have that conversation. We didn't talk about it's okay if someone touches you here, but not there Mm. or how. And, you know, and I, I was able to give that to my own kids, but looking back on my own life, like some of the things I allowed as a child from like other kids, mm-hmm. yeah. um, oh, I wish I'd have had those tools. Oh my gosh. I have so many stories of people inappropriately touching me as a teenager. Mm. Like there was this one boy in this apartment complex we lived in who would come up and I was like 13 or 14 at the time who would come up behind me and wrap his arms around me from the back Hmm. and touch my no-no square, (laughs) right? Never asked me. 
Mm. And yeah. I just let him because, uh, you know, prior to all of that, there had been ongoing sexual abuse. Right. So I was already primed for right letting people touch me in places like that mm. without realizing I needed to say no. Like, it never occurred to me to say no. Right. Yeah. It wasn't until I became an adult and started doing martial arts training and what have you that I started to develop the desire to say no. Mm -hmm. Right. And... You know, um, you know, I have a lot of stories of that nature that, you know, nowadays I'm like, yeah, you, you say no. Yeah. <laughs> like, it seems so simple, but until you know that you can, mm -hmm. until you know where your body ends, where another person's begins, and there's that, you know, it seems obvious, but I know I've had to learn that. Um, yeah. And once you get it, you got it. Right. It's just getting it. And, and something we were talking about the other day was the idea that women are generally somehow primed to not be rude. Right. Mm -hmm. To be nice. It's, yeah. To be nice. So that if the, the ideas of being nice is you just don't say no. About anything. Or like. tell somebody they can't do something. Right. And um, the Mama Bear Initiative podcast, Evelyn, myself, and Rochelle are giving you permission to say no. Yes, absolutely. Say no. Say no. Say no early, say no often. You do not have to be nice. And right. In many cases, you don't even have to be polite. You don't have to be outright rude. But if the situation calls for being loud and, <laughs> you know, Yeah, I mean, you can start with a, a firm, polite no mm -hmm. and move to stronger and louder if the person's not listening yeah you know if they're if they're pushing your boundary and pushing your boundary you can get louder and louder you can call for help yeah whatever that means in the situation yeah i mean like with a lot of the things we talk about we would like to be able to de-escalate if possible you know put a stop to it by a look um by our you know vocal tone by our, the way we position our body Mm -hmm. But we also understand that, you know, if it needs to get to a point where, you know, you have to defend yourself in whatever way, you right. know, there again, you have permission. And you have the authority. Yes. To like say we, no. That's right. It's your body. It's your job to protect it. If anything, it's a responsibility. It's not just okay to do that, but you need to do that. Right. And to take it seriously. And you can use your voice, your face, your body, your, you know, how you're standing, what you're doing with your hands. Although, don't put your dukes up until you're ready to punch somebody That's in the face. Right. Yeah. Think about the message you're sending. Right. You know, and, and even practicing. And a lot of times I'll practice in front of a mirror or I'll practice with someone else. We even do this, you know, when we train, we mm -hmm. work with each other. We give each other feedback because you want to make sure it's going to actually work. Right. And that you are, and, and plus you're practicing it so it's inside of you, so that you're already kind of used to doing it. Right. Yeah. So it's a tool that you're already familiar with. I've never had to stop somebody from touching me, but I have had situations where someone was approaching me in a rather aggressive manner. While I get uncomfortable when we practice these things in class, in the moment, I respond. My, I don't fawn. I respond in the correct way. Like it's in my body. It's in my memory to do that. So you can keep people at an arm's distance if that's what makes you comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't have to get close to you. Yeah. I think figuring out where your comfort zone is. Um, I know like at work, I, I'm trying to think of what the distance is, but it's kind of like it's understood. Mm -hmm. You come yes. within about four feet unless you have to look at someone else's screen. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at the screen together, that's, you know, on their computer. And, but, yeah, there's a, there's a distance in figuring out what you're comfortable with. Yeah, and I think if you go back and listen to our episode about boundaries. Yes. And sort of get an idea of what it means to, to set a boundary and maintain it. And this is the important part. Yeah. If you're going to set a boundary... Got to maintain you it. You have to maintain it. Yeah, you need to enforce it. I mean, if you think about it as, you know, like a literal boundary, like let's say there are certain things you wouldn't wouldn't allow on your property. Right. So figuring out 
what you will and won't allow. And then when you see something starting to, uh, you know, violate that, you can put a stop to it. Right. Because you know where you end and where the other person begins. You know, you, you know what you're comfortable with and what you're not. Right. And, and boundaries can be specific to the person or it could be general, mm-hmm. you know, right. like, you know, you, you don't want people coming within a certain distance of you. And when you've warned them and they won't listen, you could do what you need to do. I think also um, understanding certain people, like let's say, for example, you know, someone may occasionally come into your office or, you know, into your you know, whatever. And, um, you know, they have a tendency to get too close. You can have a strategy. I'm going to stand over here. If I see him approaching or her approaching, you know, Mm -hmm. we're getting a little too close. I'm going to pivot. I'm, you know, having a plan ahead of time, I think is wise. Strategizing. How are you going to handle this? Yeah. Like if you're in a situation with a specific person and you know that they're going to act a certain way, why not strategize to just be physically away from that person. Right. right. And, and here's something else. And I know I, I mentioned this in a short, but if you're going to be with other people, you can even talk ahead of time. Like, you know, I know Jack from marketing is going to be coming over and he tends to be a little handsy. I'm going to be walking over around to the other side of your desk. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, I got your back, you know, and I'll keep him distracted or, you know, you like we can work together. Yeah, I have allies. Mm-hmm. And hopefully... If you're the one person, if you're someone that somebody's targeting for inappropriate touching and you're around other people, it would be enough for them to not touch you. So you could just stay with other people while they're around. Yeah. Stay in a crowd. Yeah. And, and of don't course, have a plan you. in case for whatever reason you end up being alone. But strategizing, as Steph said, having a plan, having other people on board. Yeah. Yeah. And really so help. Being, being willing to say no. To keep your boundaries and, you know, be aware of situational and societal things, cultural things, yes. deciding whether or not you want to engage in that kind of behavior. It's all up to you. Mm-hmm. That's what we're trying to say. It's up yes. to you to decide what you want to have going on when it comes to physical touch. Yes. And you can absolutely say, please don't touch me. Yes. And please I like- don't touch me. I'd like to add in that if you work anywhere with other people, there is zero tolerance for any sort of inappropriate touching. So you can go to your supervisor, you can go to your supervisor or your manager, whomever, and tell them you are Mm -hmm. not wrong to do that. Mm -hmm. If you are Mm -hmm. uncomfortable with whatever they're doing, you have the right to report it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the other person intended. Right. It doesn't matter what they intended. If you don't want it and they won't stop, Yeah. you can... Do something about it. Yes, absolutely. And you should. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've probably gotten to the end of this yes. discussion. And I feel like we've made our point clear enough. Yeah. And we hope that you got something out of it. That you, you know, feel like you have some some permission and authority to manage your space. Because we have definitely given it to you. Yeah. Yes. And if you were thinking of somebody while you were listening to this, maybe some people's names came to mind that might be able to benefit from hearing this, please share. Yes. And we want to definitely get the word out there and get more people empowered to say, no, don't touch me there. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. (laughs) (laughs) We want to start with please, but if you have to drop the please at some point, then feel free. Firm, but polite. Sometimes you can't. You can't just say please because it feels like begging. Right. It does. <laughs> After a certain period of time. <laughs> right. Especially Absolutely. when they're not listening. And also, if you want to continue the discussion, please weigh in in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. If you've got stories of people touching you when they shouldn't, things you did about it. Please yeah. share them. Yes. Definitely share. share it. Yeah. So we'd like to thank you for joining us on this podcast episode. I'm Stephanie Dunham. I'm Evelyn Mason. I'm Rochelle Knapp. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. See you guys. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks so much for joining us as we discussed such an important topic. We hope you got some food for thought and encouragement to keep going and keep growing. 
See you later, Bear Club. Remember to join the Bear Club on our Patreon page for exclusive content. The link is in the description. You can find our podcast on Google, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts.